So what we're going to look at today is um, I've got actually three presentations when you see my screen. This is uh, the one which is work groups and team. And then this is related to your tasks 2.1, 2.2. And then I've got another one which is related to task 1.2 in learning outcome one, which is understanding interpersonal and organizational communication. What we're going to do is obviously start with, uh, you know, task 3.3, which is primarily elements of leadership. Now, I'm looking at covering this particular section is because of two reasons. One is uh, to start with one, this particular section will come across, uh, you know, a lot of other units that we will study. Um, things like, you know, leadership, motivation theories, difference between managers and leaders, these are concepts that you will get to, you know, read and obviously learn across a number of units in your course, because these are considered to be management related concepts and they can be applied in, you know, HR related units, marketing led units, management led units, financial management led unit. So this is more of a theoretical component that you'll be able to, you know, kind of cross utilize and cross reference across a number of units that we are studying. Okay. So what we want to be able to do is basically give you some idea and then, uh, you know, a small, uh, you know, a few slides, when I say a small presentation, a few slides, which primarily give you a clear idea of what is leadership, what are the different types of leaderships, and how and when do we use these leadership styles when we look at uh, implementing them within an organization. And then the context that we are looking at in particular, uh, you know, how do leaders adapt to employees working remotely that is the context but the whole essence of understanding is we want to be able to understand leadership as a topic and then that can be applied across to any context whether it's uh, remote working you know leadership required within organizations in the financial side like uh, you know at the department level things like that you can always contextualize it Yes. Is that okay? So let's start and crack on with the elements of leadership uh, for discussion, which is, uh, you know, task 3.3 in the unit people in organization. And depending on what, uh, you know, the time permits, we will look at uh, moving to the other presentations. And when I finish the session today, I will send you the email combined for yesterday and today for the uh, things that we have covered. Okay. So from yesterday, I think we were only able to look at the overview of the unit. And we also specifically looked at uh, task 1.4, which was organizational structure and its impact on the communication methods. So we look, we will, when I send you the slides today, you look at horizontal communication, vertical communication, types of organizational structures, flat, matrix, functional, uh, you know, hybrid. And then within that, you will see how the distribution of power, uh, decision making, this roles and responsibility is done. Uh, from an organizational perspective and how do you then address and use the various elements of communication at different levels is what is the intended part of the study when we look at task 1.4 which is uh, you know evaluate how organizational structures impact communication so today we are going to look at uh, you know to begin with uh, the bit which is analyze leadership styles and for which uh, what we will look at is the elements of leadership first go to leadership styles and then contextualize it to the topic, which is remote working. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. I think I can't be simpler than this, but uh, you know, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask me. Okay. okay. Is the slide clearly visible and is, uh, you know, I'm, am I clearly audible? There's no distortion. Yeah. Okay. See. Yes. Okay. Brilliant. If not, I can, you know, obviously make this size full, uh, the slide full screen as well. If, if the text might, uh, you know, is not readable, then do let me know. Okay. Now, um, going to the first element, which is looking at understanding what is leadership. How do you define leadership? Or according to you, what is a leader? Uh, well, somebody that takes a lead. Um, if there's like a, a team or a group of people, it's a person that steps out and takes a lead and leads the team or the group. But everybody or look to that person or go to that person yes in a way yes so when we look at for example uh, what you rightly said is when you look at leadership or when you look at a uh, leader 
you typically think of a person, uh, you know, amongst a group of people who is able to come in and, uh, you know, maybe take charge or has the natural ability to be able to, you know, kind of outperform the others in that group. And you tend to then see that person as a, as a leader. Yes. Right? At least that's what we understand in terms of the basic definition of, you know, um, somebody who wants to be able to take a leader, a leader or, you know, a leadership position. So it could be something, it could be a position like uh, you look at a head teacher in school. She is considered to be the leader in terms of, you know, being the head teacher. So head teacher. There are lots of teachers teaching in the school, but the head kind of title gives that, um, uh, it gives that clue away saying that that person is obviously, you know, somebody superior or somebody senior enough to head the group of teachers. Similarly, you'll have other uh, connotations when you look at, for example, um, you know, a manager. So a person who's able to manage and a person who is able to uh, delegate, effectively delegate jobs and get the jobs done on time is a person who's classified as a manager. So when you look at somebody who's a leader, uh, the leader uh, is basically a person uh, from amongst a group of person who has the ability to be able to finish or, you know, take up a role and then uh, complete that role. Leadership is nothing but if we extend that particular thing forward in terms of leader. So leadership is the ability to influence uh, others through the route of communication. So somebody who gets into the leadership position is a person who has good communication skills. And we are again looking at now the parameters or factors which make an effective leader. And why do we call that person to be leading effectively or being in that leadership position is because that person has the ability to be able to influence people because of its communicate because of his or her communication skills and has the individuality, you know, he, he or she as a person kind of stamps the individuality on a particular group of people that he kind of leads. So it's like saying that if you meet somebody uh, in a team, and you meet the leader, then you tend to say that that person represents the values, the beliefs, and has the power or the ability to be able to negotiate or, you know, kind of uh, do the negotiations on the behalf of the people he represents. It's because he himself has the embodiment of somebody uh, which kind of represents the kind of people he comes, uh, comes to represent or a group of people he, re he represents. So here we are talking about somebody who's uh, in the position wherein he or she has the ability to influence others and the activities of others and is able to then take all of them together and then achieve a meaningful aim or objective or a goal which has been set by the organization. Okay. Now the other thing that we also look at is employees generally who are in this position they uh, or say for example if you look up to a particular person like in the family you, most children would look up to their father or their mother similarly within an organization an example would be here that a lot of staff employees uh, people who are employed look up to the leaders as an exemplar or as a role model that this person is in this position because has been able to do this and this or has been able to accomplish this and this and that kind of classifies that particular person wherein People look up to him because he has certain skills or certain abilities which are which are you know greater than the sum whole of all the other group people in that group, and that give him that position of being a leader or in that leadership position. Now, when we look at um, you know the key things that we look at spotting uh, in terms of being a leader, what are the key skills or key things that we normally spot within a person who is in that position? are summarized in this slide. So what we expect is when you see a person in a leadership position, so for example, when you look at Theresa May, that she's the leader of the Tory party, but she's also the prime minister of the country. And as a, as a person in that position, she is expected to show leadership in the time of crisis. She is expected to show direction or she is expected to pro provide direction rather than show direction but provide direction in the case of, uh, you know, in the face of, uh, you know, any problems or issues. So when you looked at, uh, you know, Brexit, she triggered the, uh, you know, Article 50 today, 
officially and formally signing that. Now, she in her party is expected to show leadership who is going to drive the process of Britain going out of the European Union. Is that okay? Yeah. And then what we look at is we look at certain reasons, certain skills or certain reasons why we feel that these people are in that position is because they practice certain traits which make uh, or provide you the leadership um, you know, quality. And those are things like when you look at reason, they have the ability to be able to reason. They are friendly in their uh, you know, outlook and in terms of their nature. They generally have something called, which is a coalition building nature. That means they're able to build bridges. They're able to kind of you know, bring people together. They have the ability to be able to do negotiation or bargaining as we call it. So a good person or a person can be a good leader if he or she possesses some of these qualities or skills and that person then will be defined or probably set aside as a leader. They have a bit of assertiveness in their tone. That means they have the ability to be able to assert their authority as and when required. And in some cases, when people go into leadership positions, they also rise in the organization to get higher positions or higher titles in terms of roles and responsibilities. And to a certain extent, people in leadership position can also levy or you know, kind of bring on sanctions when it is required in some of the roles. An example of here, uh, when you look at uh, the sanctions would be that if you look at a headmaster or a head teacher in particular in the school, he or she can actually to discipline a child bring across a certain amount of sanctions, uh, you know, uh, for that particular uh, group or that kid to be able to bring them in line as far as that is concerned. And that is something they are able to do because they are in leadership position. Now, leaders need, need to learn a variety of strategies that they can rely on. And obviously, this is a generic statement. But what it means here is that leaders also evolve. That means these qualities also evolve uh, with with time and obviously depending on situations. So sometimes leaders, uh, sometimes some people can take up these roles because they have the ability to be able to adapt and adapt quickly as in comparison to some of the other colleagues within the organization. And that is why they step into the leadership position. Is that okay? Yeah. Now, looking at differentiating the role of leadership and management. Now, we always uh, talk about, you know, differences between leaders and managers. Could you think of, uh, you know, what are the differences between leaders and managers? Uh, managers have, uh, like, a higher authority. So they manage, manage the business, man, manage the team. Um, leaders more or less lead the team that they're in and uh, take charge. Um, the leaders could get approval from management if if the leader of like certain things like um, recruitment of staff. Yeah. That's got to be approved by management. Yes, that is correct. So I think if we look at it from a point of view of a basic, uh, you know, just go back to the definition what you said is correct. Uh, but look at the very basics is when we say the word leader, leader is people generally tend to follow leaders. And when yeah. you look at managers, because the word manage comes and makes the word manager, they generally tend to work with people to be able to manage them. So there's a key difference between leaders and managers, which if I go by the definition itself would be that for leaders, people follow leaders and for managers, they work with people to be able to manage things. So there are two different types of situations wherein you will see this as a as an example will be that in the case of crisis or in the event of say problems or sorry, in the case of excuse me, in the case of problems or crisis, you will generally see that people will step into a role wherein they will show leadership. <coughs> Sorry. And in the case of, you know, certain types of crisis, which are, which are, um, 
which are things that you face on a daily basis in operational uh, you know environments you will see the managers will step up to manage that situation so a crisis is something which happens for the first time and then somebody has the natural ability to be able to step into that role to, to manage that thing and when you look at managers they will be good at managing things which happen on a routine or you know on a uh, some sort of a routine basis that means could be termly weekly monthly and those are the people which will look at managing those situations does does that make sense yeah and then the other thing that we can also look at is when we look at leaders in particular is that leaders are good at you know creating a vision or painting a picture you know they are very good at creating um you know a scenario which excites motivates uh, employees in general but when you look at managers they focus on once the vision has been created or the role has been created they then look at working within that to deal with the nitty gritty isn't it they focus yeah. essentially on you know the the basics of how to achieve that vision so if you look at theresa may for example the prime minister will essentially end up laying down a vision for how britain would come out of uh, european union and whether that will be a hard brexit or a soft brexit and things like that so she is laying down that vision in terms of leadership but it, when it comes to her cabinet you look at david davis you look at boris johnson and you look at so the others they in terms of negotiations will actually work on the nitty gritty or the processes to be able to get the best possible deal do you see that difference yeah so she will basically lay down the macro plan and the micro workings of that plan will be actually done by the staff or the cabinet which is the business secretary the commerce secretary and you know the foreign secretary and they will basically work out how exactly britain leaves and with what kind of deal britain leaves the european union similarly what we look at is we look at a difference between how do we distinguish or have look at differences between management and leadership so management as you can see focuses on moment to moment organizational performance because this is the concept of managing it that means if you are working on a project and the project has a certain timeline then there is a manager required on that timeline because you want to manage each of the steps of that project so that you are able to meet the timeline a leader would primarily work on bidding for that project for example so there will be a separate team which will bid for the project but when it comes to the bid has been won and the project or the tender has been won you will see a project manager going in who knows and has the basic expertise and experience to manage that on a day to day basis to be able to deliver that project is that understood yes yeah. so management in essence is concerned with processes policies procedures leadership if you look at on the other end uh, on the other side or the other end is basically focused on long term goals of the organization so when you look at the government here the government is showing leadership and the management bit is being done by the cabinet so leadership is shown by the prime minister the management bit is being done by the business commerce and the foreign secretary and the leadership is concerned with substance so for example the talks between nicholas sturgeon and obviously when you look at theresa may in terms of the timing of the referendum the independence referendum in d2 as they calling it for scotland the substance of discussion is basically nothing but leadership from the prime minister to micro uh, to manage to micro manage that you cannot have the referendum before britain leaves the eu before the two year process of leaving the eu is over is that clear enough yes yeah. okay brilliant okay now let's understand there are three different types of theories you know over the years research has uh, you know created three different types of leadership theories and these are basically theories which kind of categorize the three different types of leadership models that we see so first we look at is a trait theory the other is behavioral theory and the third is contingency theory see these are the three leadership theories which kind of will help originate or you know give direction to 
the types of leadership that we see within organization or the leadership styles which actually are seen in organization by, or by people when they exhibit a certain style of leadership style. So let's look at, uh, you know, in a slide or two, look at what are the three types of uh, uh, user theories. So I've caught on a bit of a cold uh, this evening. Now, when you look at trait theory, the trait theory states that there is no secret, uh, you know, the secret of leadership is found in six different categories of trait which the person actually exhibits. So here what they do is they classify a leader uh, or a person as a leader if the lead person shows these six types of characteristics of traits. And that's why it is called the trait theory. Now, if you don't show these kind of traits, then you are not going to be classified as a leader as per this theory. So what those traits are, are looking at, you know, the physical appearance, background, which consists of things like education, class and experience that you come from. They classify you on the basis of your intelligence, personality, task related achievements or, you know, roles and responsibilities that you've had in the past. And then they also look at social aspect of it in terms of have you had this particular responsibility in the past and how have you kind of, uh, you know, um, executed this responsibility. So in a nutshell, what it says is no one, um, you know, when you look at in particular, if they don't have these combination of characteristics or traits, then they say that you are not likely to be linked to this model of leadership. Is that okay? Yeah. Now, in terms of example, can you think of an example uh, looking at these six, uh, you know, traits that what are the, uh, you know, uh, examples that you can find this kind of leadership theory in? Can you think of vaguely, you know, or maybe make a guess? Uh, try leadership. Try. Yeah, so no, in, in a particular situation or a business or, you know, what kind of uh, thing, where will you find, uh, you know, these kind of, uh, you know, typical uh, leadership theories with, or organizations in which typically they will classify a leader on the basis of these traits? Um, education, colleges, schools, universities. It could be. So... Probably, uh, okay. Now, incidentally, this particular theory, you know, has come across from uh, one of the, uh, you know, great scientists, which is called Thomas Carlyle. And this is one of the oldest leadership theories which originated, you know, in the mid 1800s or in the late, uh, you know, early 19th century, as we call it. And this basically only characterized people with certain traits to be showing or having that quality of leadership. And this, this was a model, you know, which was adapted early, early enough um, in terms of research that most organizations, when they were, when we had the industrial revolution within Britain, most organizations which were manufacturing engineering organizations or which, you know, were in the manufacturing sector were basically seen to have implemented this particular theory now the reason why why this is this was done is because person or people with certain kind of background and experience were expected to excel or you know be in that position to be able to be uh, showing uh, you know basically being leaders and showing leadership so an example was when you look at say for example a spinning mill or a manufacturing, for example, when you look at motor, uh, you know, industry in particular, when you look at uh, that as an example, a factory, there were certain types of people which were qualified and had the ability to be able to deal with, uh, you know, certain types of uh, mechanics in particular, when you look at factory working. And because they had the structure, they had uh, the, say, for example, when I say physical structure, they had the knowledge because they had no formal education, but they had the knowledge because they had worked in that sector with somebody as a men, uh, you know, as a as a mentee, and they were able to pick this up. Were were basically given you know positions of leadership. So this particular 
theory, in, uh, if you look at, because it originated in the early, uh, you know, 19th century or the mid 1800 or early 19th century, basically was synonymous with the Industrial Revolution in Britain, uh, as an example. Is that okay? Yeah. So here the characteristics or, you know, the physical appearance of the person was actually taken into account when roles and responsibilities were given out, uh, you know, in, in the organization. So when you look at anybody working within a factory, because there are a large number of people working within the factory, the person with the good physical presence, height, and, you know, some sort of a, a, a physique was actually given the position because he or she would have exercised a bit of control. And because of the personality and the aggressive nature of their, you know, structure or whatever it is, or dominance, they were able to exert that and manage those, that many large number of people within the organization or on the factory floor. Is that okay? Yeah. Does that make sense? You know? Yeah. So that, that was the reason why uh, this was maybe a model that looked at, uh, you know, the early, uh, mid, uh, you know, early 19th century. Uh, the second type of theory which came across, uh, you know, over um, a period of time from research was the behavioral theory. And this particular theory, when you look at, actually focused on the behavior of leaders and how they were able to be effective or ineffective in certain situations. So this theory in particular uh, looked at persons uh, or looked at people in particular from three different aspects. One was was the person task oriented or was the person person oriented, people's manager as we call it. And the third was, was he or she a combination of task plus a person oriented, uh, you know, uh, uh, a people oriented manager or a leader. So as it become as it becomes quite clear, when you look at people, there are there are colleagues that you will work with within the organization, which are very good in doing certain tasks. Right. If you give them a particular task, you know, they will essentially it is almost certain that you can guarantee that they'll be able to finish that task on time and they will be able to finish that, uh, you know, or complete that with absolute perfection. And in those cases, what they look at is the people uh, who are given those time up time and again, those kind of responsibilities, they are task oriented. They are very good at individually working and they are able to produce results. The other aspect uh, was that when you look at people who are people oriented, person or who are people oriented, that means they are able to work and able to effectively delegate the job within a group of people to be able to get that work done systematically and methodically. Right? Now, yeah. I'll give you a typical example of this would be that Sometimes what tends to happen is within the organization uh, or within the department that you're working, your manager would call you and he or she will actually give out a task. Now, because the nature of the task is such that it involves, uh, it has a lot of work to be accomplished and it involves a lot of people to work together, the, the, the manager will, or the leader in this case, or the person who's heading the department will actually delegate the responsibilities to an extent wherein he would he or she would actually pinpoint and choose and pick the person who is going to be good at doing that role. Because he knows the, or possibly the person comes from a background wherein he or she clearly knows that this person is good at doing this thing, this person is good at accomplishing this thing. That is why they will assign, you know, these tasks and roles in a, in a particular fashion so that the, they are one, they are able to finish that job. And second, the apple cart or you know the teamwork within the department is not disturbed that means there are some people who will be able to work individually there are some people who would like to work in a team and they would like to delegate some bit of their uh, work which has been given to be able to effectively achieve that so in that case what they look at is we look at an example wherein the manager would basically give out a role and because it involves a lot of work to be accomplished the work will be divided amongst a number of people and they will clearly delegate that work to a specific person depending on their strengths and weaknesses of what they can do and what they cannot do. So in that case, 
the leader is essentially concerned with more of the human aspect that means he or she would know your strengths and weaknesses and then accordingly delegate that work to you so that you are able to one complete it and also the overall work within the team gets completed does that make sense yeah so an example here that i would give you is if i go back to tesco stores right every evening when the store closes what will happen is the 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 general manager would essentially you know give out a task more or less on a daily basis to check on a couple of things before they lock the store up right so one they there will be a group of people that he will say that if you are on the shop floor please can you go and check there are no customers in the on in the store now there will be a group of supervisors or pe- group of people who will act as supervisors who will basically go and check that the people at the till are being quickly served and they are making sure that the tills are cashed and then the cash accounted for before they close the store there will be certain people who will be given jobs to restock or reshelf within the store so that tomorrow when they open they clearly know that the uh, the, the uh, enough stock is there on the shelves for the customers to be able to be allowed in to come in and do the shop so here the general manager is quite people oriented and he knows what kind of roles and responsibilities to give every day at about 7 pm in the evening just before they close the store so that one they are able to round their work up but at the same point in time keep the goals and objectives in mind by the time they close the store or shut the store at 10 all these jobs are also finished is that okay yeah and if i have to just extend that example he basically aligns a particular responsibility or a task to a type of person wherein they know that they do this on a daily basis so people who do the shelving or stocking will actually be asked to do that particular job itself because they are very good at accomplishing that task and it is something that they are familiar with because they do this day in day out basis he wouldn't ask a person working on the till or somebody who is a supervisor supervising the till to be able to go and supervise the job which is for shelving and stacking in terms of uh, getting the store ready for the next day is that okay yeah yeah now if you see this within the organization again when you have tight uh, you know tight deadlines and you get to see that work has to be done sometimes you will see that there is a combination of task and uh, the people oriented nature which works best and they are showed th- so there are those kind of people within the organization because of their experience and because of their past knowledge they are able to combine both these roles together and can effectively be also called a combination of task oriented and a people oriented person you could be task oriented but you could also be a good person in uh, uh, when i say good person means you have the ability to be able to work as a member in a team or as a team member so you can do your task but you can also support others in terms of helping them to complete the task if you are able to finish your task early is that okay yeah so sometimes what we do is we also then apply a bit of uh, you know a combination of both of these characteristics under the behavioral theory and we basically look at the option of having something called the two dimensional uh, theory which initiates structure and consideration and there is another one which is called the managerial grid theory that means in which there are different leadership styles and there are 81 different leadership styles which originate out of this managerial grid theory and then what we look at is the rule of 9 is to 9 team management which is considered to be one of the best rules so in the behavioral theory what we will look at in general is there is a two dimensional leadership theory and there is a managerial grid theory which basically comes out of you know the behavioral theory is that okay yes so let's look at um you know the next one which is contingency theory before we go into the managerial grid now managerial grid just to while we were there just to mention that managerial grid was you know invented or come up the, the model actually came up by a scientist which was called Blake Morton 
and this person basically designed a managerial grid wherein what he did was he devised a matrix or a grid in which he did a cross between leadership and management styles and then accordingly up to 81 different leadership styles were developed because of that grid that's what is important at this moment for you to remember and this was done sometime in the mid 1960s so they came up with a grid wherein they mapped on an x and y axis uh, you know leadership and management styles and because of which a lot of other managerial theories were invented theory x and y you know there are lots of other taylorism theory and things like that which came up so there are 81 different styles which came up and each of them then are, is classified as a theory. But at this stage, we, because we are broadly looking at the three different leadership styles, we will study just the three, which is trait, behavioral, and the last one is contingency. Is that okay? Yes. I'll send you a bit of a handout, but you know, there are lots of leadership theories and we apply them in different situations. So the managerial grid when we look at doing a literature review or when we look at studying leadership theories in detail, we have to study this Blake, Blake and Morton, uh, you know, leadership grid, which also leads to a lot of different types of leadership styles and theories, uh, which, which are applied in different situations. Now, looking at the last one, which is contingency theory. Now, contingency theory looks at effective leadership behavior, and that is contingent upon a situation. So here, what we look at is that you will see leadership behavior coming across from an individual, but it is contingent or dependent on a particular situation. So here, effective leadership actually depends on the interaction of the leader, leader's personal characteristics and the behavior and the situation in which that leadership is so, shown. Okay. How, how, how much do you understand this? So basically what we're looking at is three parameters here in the contingency theory. One is how effective you're going to be in a particular situation. What are your personal skills or characteristics and what kind of behavior you would kind of elude in that situation. Okay. So in, over the years, what has happened is the two theories, which is the trait and the behavioral theory, have kind of also given rise to something called a contingency theory and it combines these two other theories and takes these two factors into account that one is behavior the other is uh, a situation in which you would show a leadership and the third will be the skills or the traits that you depict in that particular situation and this kind of a thing fits into account or you know fits into a situation when you look at uh, you know a particular situation you look at working with a certain set of people, but they are all, uh, you know, uh, say leaders. And in that one of the person will actually be leading and the others will all be following. And the third would be that there is a situation wherein because of, you know, conflict, you will have only one particular person winning that competition to be effectively called a leader. So here, just to explain that in a bit more detail, this theory also then gave rise to a couple of other theories. And there is one in particular, which is called the Park Cole theory of leadership. And that is something which is almost studied, you know, um, when we when you talk about, say, for example, contingency theories in particular, um, you know, this one in particular is studied um, as, as, as uh, you know, as one of the key theories under the contingency theory. And what this means in particular is that when they look at analyzing, uh, you know, um, let's put it this way, when they look at analyzing a particular situation and in that situation, you look at a particular person who takes the leadership position, <coughs> he or she is expected to be basically following a particular path. And if you, and I think the most popular example that I put together, when you have elections in particular, you will say and hear this quite often is that the candidate is center right or is leftist or rightist. Have you come across this particular you know, connotation? No. Right, okay. Currently, if you look at, you know, um, uh, 
there, there is a particular discussion which keeps happening when they talk about you know that the labor leader at this moment is more of a rightist leader so here what they are basically looking at is they are defining the traits of the leader uh, and in that situation what kind of traits the leader exhibits and that kind of leads to something called the path goal uh, theory wherein what the leader will essentially do is follow a particular path in that situation and he will lead the you know the persons or people out of uh, a particular situation so in the case of path leadership theory or path goal leadership theory what will happen is the leaders will show a bit of effectiveness wherein they engage with the crowd or their colleagues but in a particular fashion that means they will exhibit a particular behavior and this is shown because the person is interacting with the internal and the external environment so there are two or three variables which come in now if i have to give you an example here uh, which i think you should be able to correlate would be when you look at jeremy corbin he was basically uh, elected as a labor leader and the second time when he was reelected he had faced you know the first time when he was elected he had faced a bit of revolt internally that he is not the right person to lead the party right he has certain principles and a certain uh, kind of beliefs which do not kind of synergize with the ethos of the labor labor party right yeah so there was an internal contest which happened and people challenged his leadership now the challenge to the leadership came across because a lot of other people felt that they will be able to provide much more effective leadership than jeremy corbin one second was that he felt they felt that he is going to take labor into a different direction as a party as against what labor stands for labor stands for middle class labor stands up to the rights of rights and uh, you know kind of uh, uh, believes wherein they believe if the labor and the middle class actually grows then the country prospers so they felt that he did not have these characteristics to be able to lead the party and he was you know kind of leaving labor into a different direction now the play was that because he has certain characteristics and he exhibits certain trait he follows a particular path to be able to lead that party and because there were people or other uh, leaders within the party which did not conform with his ideals goals and objectives what they did was they basically kind of uh, put forth a leadership challenge and this came across because there were internal and external factors which affected the way he was governing or leading the party is that okay yeah are you able to follow that yeah so if i have to recap just to recap now labor elected this particular person as the leader of the party but within the party other leaders felt that he is not the right candidate to lead the party so what they did was they did a bit of revolt or mounted another leadership challenge or a contest and that contest when it uh, came across why did it come across that explains the path goal theory because what they feel is jeremy corbin as a candidate is rightist that means he has certain beliefs he exhibits certain characteristics or traits and he will lead the party because of those characteristics and traits that he believes in into that direction into that uh, into that path so what they did was in order to kind of challenge his position they basically they kind of mounted um a leadership challenge and that led to this particular uh, you know contest being uh, placed in 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 the party itself and this is an example of path goal leadership theory so here what we need to be able to look at is the leader needs to be able to clearly clarify and keep his personal and organizational goals separate okay okay and the other thing which comes across is that what they wanted was a clear uh, you know direction in terms of where the party is going to go uh, into the 2020 general uh, elections when they happen and 
when we look at this in particular again there are some other behaviors which come across which we will go in a bit more detail uh, when i send you the uh, the uh, you know handouts is that this theory identifies four different type of leadership behaviors so there is directive supportive participative and achievement led so path goal theory will look at these four further parameters which will essentially you know kind of define what are the leadership styles now just to summarize three different theories which have come across in three different time frames and they have they have also led to the creation of different leadership styles specifically when you look at the first one which is a trait and the characteristics theory uh, that was that came about in the early uh, you know uh, mid mid 1800s or the early 1900s the behavioral theory came across because it it primarily looked at the factors wherein the person could be either task oriented or people oriented and it classified the leader on the basis of the behavior they were able to exhibit and then the last one which is contingency theory kind of combined both the trait and behavioral theory but to a certain extent also looked at giving direction or creation of certain other styles wherein they look at something which is called um you know the uh, the the style in which the leaders behave and that originated or created something which is called the path goal leadership theory so leadership in particular is a very large topic there are lots of theories lots of frameworks lots of models to look at but when it comes to looking at working within organizations and relating to this particular unit people in organization what we are looking at is we should be able to understand when we are working within teams to see what kind of leadership style or a behavior the person actually exhibits and we should be able to classify clearly what kind of uh, you know leadership theory actually applies to that situation that is what we are looking at in this particular unit and in this particular task now okay details of leadership leadership styles theories you will study at level 5 and you will study in a much more detail at level 6 in in the final year and this will come across in units like human resources management in units like financial management uh, when it comes to decision making for managers it will also come across in units like personal and professional development it will also come across in units like uh, you know communication in particular because as a person working within the organization you are you should be in a position to gauge the leadership style or the managerial style that you work within uh, when you work within a department or a team is that okay yeah that is what we are looking at understanding at this stage when we look at this particular uh, you know topic of uh, of leadership or elements of leadership or styles of leadership nothing beyond that okay okay now last slide is obviously um, there are modern views which have also originated this is a very you know burning topic that means it's a very discussed topic which keeps coming up and there is a lot of research which is happening and the modern day version of the theories uh, you know of leadership are there are two types there is transformational and transactional tf and ta and that is what we kind of implement in most uh, workings within modern day society or modern day organizations okay so okay. you would you would normally hear that michael dell for example the uh, founder uh, you know and owner of dell corporation dell computers you know he took back his organization i think about 3 years back and he took it private is because he felt that if dell continues to work in the way it's working it will disappear because pcs as a you know as a as a device to interact with the internet or deal with services will disappear in a couple of uh, decades so there will be different form of pcs tablets phones and you know other things but pc in general as a form factor would disappear so what okay. he wanted to do was he has come back he retired but he came back and he took over his organization again and took it private is because he wanted to show transformational leadership he wants to modernize the organization to be able to deal with the likes of googles and the apples and the facebooks of the world today because they are the ones uh, the software is the one which is actually driving all the uh, you know kind of driving the hardware so this is 
a transformational leadership wherein what uh, we get to see now in modern day organizations is that if they are reinventing themselves, you are reinventing the wheel, you are doing away with the old values and bringing modern values into the organization from a point of view of making the business viable or making the business last for in the future, then what we get to see is something called the transformational leadership. Okay. And the flip side of that is transactional leadership. As the word gives it away, transactional means that you will see leaders which will work within the organization, but they'll be very good at managing transactions, which could be even a transaction like taking over in a company or taking over an organization, but they'll be good in terms of managing people, managing motivation and keeping them motivated to be able to work within the organization. And this kind of uh, theory is normally, or leadership theory is normally seen in practice within still, uh, you know, current modern day manufacturing or production organizations. Is that okay? So this is where what we are seeing is now the concept of theories in terms of leadership is evolving to, and this is what we get to read in modern day, uh, you know, context is that leadership is now transformational and trans or transactional. Is that okay? Yeah. So this is where I think we'll stop today. Um, I think some of the topics are though yet brief, but require a bit of detailing, uh, even though this was, I think about 11 slides, where we've taken more, almost an hour in terms of our discussions. And what I'm going to do is uh, along with this, I'm going to send you something, uh, which is a small handout on leadership theories for you to, to be able to read. Okay. And that would basically, you know, give you a bit of handout uh, and detailed handout in terms of, you know, the, um, the types of leadership that we are looking at and where you apply in what context. So here, this is a, um, you know, an activity which is done um, wherein we have looked at evaluation of leadership theories or leadership styles. And what we've done is we've classified a lot of these uh, three basic types of theories into uh, you know, uh, details so that you'll, you'll have a paragraph each to be able to read on the type of leadership and what kind of leadership uh, style originates out of that theory. Is that okay? Yeah. So this is, this is about, uh, you know, a 12 to 15 page handout, which basically has been done from point of view of handout, but will bring together, uh, you know, work which you are required to put actually into learning outcome three. Okay. Okay. So this will cover a couple of tasks, uh, you know, as far as, uh, uh, you know, this is concerned when you, when you look at, um, you know, studying learning outcome three is specifically 3.3. .3. Analyze leadership styles suitable for remote working. Okay. Okay. Any questions so far? Um, I think that's it really. Was it heavy stuff? Were you able to understand or was it okay and simple and easy to understand? Um, well, it's, it's a topic that I've, I've got no knowledge of really, but um, yeah, it's, it's understandable and I'll understand it more when, when I read that material as well. Right, okay. Yeah. That's fine. And uh, once I send this to you for today and yesterday's session, my uh, suggestion to you would be if you have any questions, just uh, you know shoot them on the email to me. So what I can do is obviously either I will give you, uh, we'll, we'll, re we'll recap the things that we've discussed in session one and session two before we do the next topic or yeah. the other thing, I'll send you some additional reading material and I'll put an ebook today, which will be uh, covering the entire unit. And what I'm going to do is obviously um, direct you to look at certain pages uh, for reading, additional reading in the book, which will give you some uh, more knowledge and insight into the topics that we are covering. Okay. Okay. No worries. So I'll catch up with you tomorrow then. And uh, till then, uh, you know, take care and uh, speak soon. Okay. You too. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Bye.